as we welcome in our co-host, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. John, good morning. And Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matthew Harvey. Matt, good morning to you. Welcome back. Good morning. It's been a while. By the way, that opening segment uh, exchanged a couple of texts with uh, Bill Ridenour, featured in that segment yesterday, and uh, Bill informed me that was the first time in 23 years he's talked about that day and told that story about what happened the day those planes hit the pen a plane hit the Pentagon, and he was about uh, 25, 30 yards away from the impact point. He relayed that story on the air yesterday. It was quite powerful, obviously, uh, and uh, very moving as we all remember where we were the day those uh, planes hit 9-11 and uh, subsequently the next day after. As uh, It is amazing to think 23 years ago yesterday that that did happen and how fast time goes by. Yeah. And you mark it by certain things like that. And it is just astounding how quickly that goes uh, just so far in the rearview mirror, but it's uh, so important that we all remember that day and commemorate it each year and remember the people who lost their lives and the sacrifices people made uh, helping others to survive. And uh, not just in New York, but in Washington, D.C. and, and uh, Pennsylvania and all around the, the country as people pulled together. Well, well, I certainly hope he feels unburdened and from hearing uh, firsthand experience like that helps us. So I hope he knows that that um, may have been hard for him, but it was helpful for us to hear so we could have a proper perspective and, and respect for such a traumatic and tra- tragic event for our country. Agreed. Yeah. I think it was interesting is that everybody sought community then, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just people kind of drew together. I lived in uh, Vienna, Virginia at, at the time, um, very near Dulles Airport, by the way, and how creepy it was to have you know, day after day of silence, uh, except for the combat air p- patrol, which was over our house. But I remember uh, the place called Reston Town Center, which is a, a, a shopping area in, uh, in Northern Virginia. And it was packed with people who just went there, you know, to, to, to be someplace. Right. And, uh, Were you still a firefighter at that time, John? Uh, no, I had been. I my, my, rode my last fire truck in 1996. But um, our guys went there. In fact, some of our guys, uh, some of my colleagues from my fire department, are in that picture of rolling the the flag down the side of the the Pentagon. That big flag. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was that was. I had a real sense of really wishing I was there. I mean, having a not call of duty kind of thing. Yeah, like like you know I. I I had skills that I was not able to use that were not called for. But on the other hand, I, I was also a parent and, and a husband. It was just it was just an awful day. It, 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 there was that that sense. I'm in the drama business, you know, as, as a writer. But there was this there was that sense that nothing was ever going to be the same again. Mm-hmm. And and it proved to be true, at least so far. Our guest in this first segment is from the Stubblefield Institute. Ashley Hurst. She is the director of it. Good morning, Ash. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Doing well. Great to have you. Uh, you made uh, some headlines and publicity last week, probably not for the exact reasons that you were hoping for as the Institute was putting on uh, an important program and a program that should have been enjoyable for everybody. And as I think most would agree for 99% of the time, it certainly was. Absolutely. Until some protesters interrupted it for a short period of time. Can you tell me, as you were sitting there and and, and observing what was going on, can you tell me your reactions and what exactly happened and how those folks got there? Sure. So um, first I want to kind of give some details about what that program was because not everybody might be aware. But we were very fortunate to have both Senator Shelley Moore Capito and Senator Joe Manchin join us for a conversation called Beyond Pepperoni Rolls, Who Are We as West Virginia? And it was moderated by Hoppy Kerchival. And so um, really, like you said, 99.99% of it went really well. We did have a brief disturbance for about two minutes when protesters did um, come into the theater and they were intent on disrupting the event. However, um, we, you get to choose your reaction Mm -hmm. in instances like that. And thankfully, we, we met an uncivil situation with civility. And Matt was there as well. He, he assisted me and along with Shepherd University Police Department. And we really just kind of surrounded the protesters. There were, I don't know, maybe six or eight of us on stage that just kind of surrounded them and just 
walked them off and just kind of we moved forward and they they had to move and then they were escorted by campus police out of the building and then were um they left the campus and they were i want to make it very clear they were not shepherd university students i think that's something that's incredibly important here this was an outside group that has been following mansion around and so these were not students um but they, obviously they never was, had a pepperoni roll i asked them <laughs> Never had one. <laughs> that was the theme of the beyond the pepperoni roll. Beyond roll. pepperoni rolls. They they were invited on numerous occasions by Senator Manchin to talk about what they wanted to discuss. Correct. And at no point along the way did they seem interested in accepting that invitation. Correct. Yeah. Now I'm I'm understanding that they were after they were escorted out, they then got back into a vehicle and drove across the bridge back into Maryland. Yeah, they weren't students. They were from not from around there. So if I got this correct, their their main complaint was about the burning of fossil fuels, and this is what they were chanting at Senator Manchin. At the end of their complaint about burning <laughs> fossil fuels, they get in their car. They got back into a car and drove. They didn't walk. They didn't bicycle. They no. got back into their car and drove back across the bridge. What was fueling that car that drove them back across the bridge? Does it matter? I mean, it took some sort of fossil fuel, whether it was gasoline or the power to for a EV vehicle. This is my point. You know what? The there was if you're, a, if you're going to protest fossil fuels, don't drive to the protest in your fossil fuel burning car, and then don't go back home to your air conditioned house if you're going to sit around complaining about the burning of fossil fuels. It, it was my. I think. So I interacted with them outside. It was my impression that the young ones were just doing it for the clicks. It could have been whatever, insert whatever calls. The older gentleman, who was probably, I'd say, 60s, um, he was insane. <laughs> well, I say. It, it, well, and I'll tell you why, because he's like, sir, do you have a granddaughter or grandkids? I'm like, oh, my gosh, do I really look that old? No, oh, <laughs> I don't. I have a daughter, dude. Well, but I think, you know, beyond that, one, giving them additional attention is what they want. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were so incredibly thankful that we could really, as soon as that incident wrapped up, and it was about two minutes. Right, it was. And so we moved on, we reset, and went on to have a fantastic conversation. And it is a little ironic, I think, John, as you said beforehand, that that, that event kicked off our year of civility at Shepherd University. So this academic year is dedicated to civility. And, you know, obviously the protest was not what we would have wanted. It was definitely, you know, disrespectful to our our participants. However, it did provide a contrast to the way that civil political communication currently is and the ideal that we strive for. Where in the timeline of the presentation of this happened? Was it at the beginning, middle, or end? It was at the beginning. Yeah, we had just finished a lot of people, opening remarks. Oh, sorry. A lot of people thought it was part of the mm -hmm. program. It kind of was right at the beginning. So mm -hmm. right. it took me a minute to realize what was happening. Is there security around for these events? Should the Shepherd provide any? Yes, we do coordinate with Shepherd University Police Department, and they were on the scene. And then uh, Shepherd University, if needed, can also... Has, also has working agreements with Shepherdstown Police Department, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, the um, state police, and so on and so forth. Will this change anything in the way you do future events? Oh, absolutely. I think anytime you have something like this happen, you have to learn from it. And so we will be um, more intentional about making sure that everyone has, everyone from the person standing at the door backstage to of course, us and Shepherd University Police Department has the run of show, so they know exactly what is happening because, I mean, from radio, you know you time things out to the minute, and that will help with communication. We're looking at our spaces to see what what needs to happen there in order to make it more, it I guess, it harder for people to come in late mm -hmm. or to come in without having to stop and see somebody along the way. I was told, and I am I am instructed whenever Senators Capito or Manchin are going to be uh, on the show or they're going to be in the area, that because of this recent development of protesters who follow these folks around, 
I am asked to not give advance information on where they're going to be just because of items like this. In this particular case, there was plenty of publicity Correct. for them to time this out as, as they as they did, and it is what it is, I suppose. But anyway. You know what the irony of all this is? The yeah. irony is that they were protesting fossil fuels while driving in a car to the protest. And, and they do this to get attention. Right. So the we're lead, sitting here talking about them. Exactly. The lead story on the news the next day blah, blah. Was, was not the presentation. The lead story was the protest. And now here we are. We're talking exactly. about it again. And so it is, if, if that's what they're going for, there is a reward mm -hmm. through doing this by by being by being an insane jerk and it was very interesting to see as soon as he said insane or crazy or whatever he, he was just you super bristled angry. i mean you're so you, actually is you're you're so you're so wired for your job of civility mm -hmm. that you know as soon as he said the pejorative of crazy you got you got nervous so <laughs> i should have said angry he was super angry and just yeah. went like ah you're killing your kid everybody's kid like, well, hey, I listen. But this. The, 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 I, we haven't mentioned any names. We haven't mentioned your organization. So, as far as that goes, they're just anonymous interrupters. But it was a great event. It was. It was um, really neat for me as a lifelong West Virginian uh, from another part of the state to see two, three people that have clearly known each other for a long time, and the two senators and Hoppy, mm -hmm. and to just kind of reminisce. And it was like mm -hmm. you're set on. You know, on, on in someone's in someone's living room, talking to them. And as a as a born and raised West Virginian, Matt, I know you take particular pride in those sorts. I do, and and I was happy that you know they were talking about things that I hadn't thought about in a while, uh, and was able to you know kind of reminisce with them, talking about certain festivals, and mm -hmm. you know I, I know I have my favorite festivals around the state. That was one of the kind of neat questions that they addressed, and I, I was. But the only thing is, I kind of cringed <laughs> when he mentioned Jessica White. Oh, um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Something to Netflix I know, I know. Pattern, baby. And, and, and uh, the, our, the wild our, whites of West Virginia. Yeah. And our county administrator, who's new to the area uh, in Jefferson County, she was set beside me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's going to go Google that. I know. Uh -huh. and, and I know there was a, a lot of, there was probably a lot of people that weren't from, originally from West Virginia there, probably at least half or more. And uh, I was like, oh, no, they're going to go Google Jesco. Yeah, but you know what, though? When, you, when you're talking about history and, and such, history is everything. It's the good stuff. It's the bad it stuff. Is. And there isn't a state, a city, or a town, or a family out there that doesn't have some bad stuff. So, the, well, let me just close that, that loop out with the word is that Jesco moved to Arkansas. <laughs> this was years ago. So he kind of, you know, he was around, mm -hmm. and he was, I got a bobble foot figurine of jesco white autographed he was he was at the uh, power park in charleston well, then you couldn't have been too repulsed by it well i mean <laughs> you got i had to right too. well he was on uh yeah. hey ash before we run out of time this sure. is a big month for you folks coming up too uh, i think you guys are partnering with us for uh two debates that we're doing with candidate forums uh, yes. october 15 and 22 great Correct. to have you back for that you've got the rucker doyle a debate coming up? We actually have two Rucker Doyle debates. So the first one is October 1st at 7 o'clock at the Bird Center at Shepherd University. And the second one is October 15th, also at 7 o'clock, but that will be in the LGI room at Musselman High School. LGI room of Musselman High School. Yes. All right, what's an LGI room? Uh, that is the name of the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know. All right, cool. Uh, very nice. And and then uh, this, of course, is the month of civility. It's the year of the civility. The year of civility. Oh, the we've extended it a little bit. Yes. So the year of civility is a collaboration between Shepherd University and the Stubblefield Institute to highlight opportunities for civil discourse throughout this year. I mean, it's an obvious year to do this with the election coming up and uh, what is happening not only in our state but nationally. And so we are highlighting several opportunities to engage in civil discourse. So not only did we have our kickoff event, which was last Thursday, but then this Saturday we'll be having our civility and we're just giving out free iced tea to people attending Shepherd University's Family Day. 
We have the, on September 18th at 7, we have Watchdogs, Inspectors General, and the Battle for Honest and Accountable Government, and that's being hosted by the Bird Center. Mm -hmm. And then on September 24th at 6.30, we have Science, Fact, or Fiction, Artificial Intelligence Risk, and What to Do About It. That is a President's Lecture. We're doing voter registration, and then we move into our series of debates, including our second for students, by students, candidate town hall, which will be on October 3rd. And that features all of the candidates for delegates, I think all but one actually, for delegates from districts 97 through 100, and then our Jefferson County Commission candidates. So we have a lot going on. It is, and you handle all of it uh, pretty well, I'd say. You've gotten a lot of great reviews, especially from the guy whose name is on the Institute in Bill Stubblefield. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and I can't forget to mention that we are partnering with Matt and West Virginia First on November 14th, and John is part of um, the person or the group organizing that event to talk about West Virginia First and to help share information with the public about um, how they can engage and what what it means for our state john is in this john yeah, yes john is in this john yeah you didn't mention that did you no oh tell I, us. I do stuff that tell me about that it, I, it <laughs> i'm I, supposed I, to know everything you do <laughs> <laughs> i'm just part of the board that helps put stuff together i'm part of a team and i work quietly apparently <laughs> surreptitiously <laughs> i knew behind the scenes i knew rob. you knew i knew I, everyone knew buddy yeah, yeah actually knew, yes, yeah. knew well we said John don't did. tell rob <laughs> and, um, and you guys did a great job collective effort i think that's a, it's good to keep a secret i think that one of the lessons that comes out of uh, the institute and and civil discourse is how much learning and communication can happen when people aren't yelling at each other oh, you know so when when the rule is you have to be polite people spend less time worrying about how they've just been insulted and formulating their retort, you know, th th you actually start thinking about logical discourse mm -hmm. and, and you learn things. It used to be, it used to be a regular thing. In Absolutely. I want to, uh, the Rocker Doyle debates, which are going to be in an interesting format. The first one will be without a moderator at all. And the second one is going to go based on how the first one Correct. goes without a moderator. Uh, is admission free? Is, is. is there any? Is there a, a limit or a, on the number of people you can take? So the limit is the number the room holds, and so I believe the LGI room holds about 100. But certainly, we've had programs there before where people have been standing as mm -hmm. long as we don't exceed what the fire marshal will allow. We're good to go. And that's that's the 15th. That is the 15th at seven o'clock at Musselman High School. What about the one on the first? The one at the first is on the first is at the Bird Center at Shepherd University, also at seven o'clock. And what's the capacity there? The ca the capacity of the Bird Center it can seat 99. 99. Mm -hmm. And not a single more, not a single person more. <laughs> Who so, would design a room for 99 people? I, this offends me. My OCD hurts. I kind of I <laughs> like that number a little bit. So how will the event begin? Have you given thought to that? Are, are you there running things Correct. for that one? Correct. So for the Rucker-Doyle debate, the way that it is shaping up is that I will give opening remarks, as I typically do with our events. Our candidates will each have a few minutes to give opening remarks. And then we really want to get to audience questions as quickly as possible. Of course, we expect our audience to be civil. We expect our audience to, you know, if they're going to ask a question, they need to ask it. It's not, it's not the time to make a, a 15 minute speech. But we also know that the candidates have committed, and I, this is something that I think is really neat. The candidates have committed that if someone starts to attack one of the other candidates, the one that is not being attacked is the one who will put a stop to it. And they are the ones that who will speak up. And so I really think it's neat that Senator Rucker and John Doyle are setting that example that you can be opponents in a political race and you don't have to tear each other down and you don't have to allow your supporters to do it either. If I am, and both of these folks have voting records. Correct. Okay, because they both have held office. If I am questioning the voting record of one of the two of them, and then as a follow-up, I challenge them as to their response regarding that vote because I disagree with it. Is that regarded as an attack? I don't think that's an attack. And so we were having this conversation recently regarding the presidential debate and what 
what seems to be within civil discourse and what is not. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, if something is is part of your public record, especially with public officials. So they have a voting record. They've made public statements. If they have done something in the public sphere, then that can be fair game as long as you're focusing on that particular action. We're not going to stand up and call someone names or insult their intelligence, insult um, their families. But if you want to say, I disagree with your vote on that, or, you know, you said this at this point, but then you voted this way, can you explain that? That's perfectly okay. How do you know it's over? How do I? How do you know the evening's over? Either when the questions run out mm -hmm. or when our allotted time in the room ends. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you let I Doyle think, go, that yeah. they could have a long time. <laughs> You're going to run out of time. Yeah. The, the lot of time. <laughs> you might be okay. there a while. Yeah. Hey, can I? Was w did I hear that there was a a, a a really nice donation made to the Stubblefield Institute? Yes. Yes. Was that announced at that event? That was announced. We had a dinner prior to that event. We had a small dinner, and we did announce that the Stubblefields, in just in incredible generosity. Uh, did work with the community found the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation recently to give a six point two million dollar gift to the community foundation to benefit the Stubblefield Institute. And so that gift has an incredible impact on our organization. It means that we are because it's an endowment, we will be funded in perpetuity as you know, we will be good stewards of that. It gives us opportunities to grow in the future. And it allows us to really focus on our mission of promoting civil discourse as opposed to, I mean, if you're in the nonprofit space, you understand the, the constant churn of trying to make sure you have enough funding. Mm -hmm. And that can really detract from your mission when you're simply trying to keep your staff paid. And then next comes, can I fund programming? Now, is it true that John Gilstrap offered to match that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have a conversation after this. After I, I was, this. It'll be a short <laughs> I, I was going to say, I was going to say, John, check your wallet. I yeah. think Bill found it and turned it in. Quite, be, quite possible. Quite possible. Yes. Uh, Ash, about a minute and a half left. Uh, are there any other programs you folks are doing we didn't get a chance to mention? Sure. So, like I said, we have the West Virginia First program coming up on November um, 14th. We are also in the process of working out a week around the election with the Shepherdstown Ministerial Association in which the churches work together to help remind our community that through this election, whether we agree or whether we disagree, we are still a community. And giving our, our community the tools that they need to move through this election no matter who wins and through january in a way that celebrates us as a community and helps us stay as one community and so the kickoff event for that which should be on or which should be on um i believe it's october 30th is going to be a panel discussion with representatives of different faith communities on how we can lean on our faith traditions to move us through this time. Very nice. Ash, keep up the great work. Thank you. Appreciate your time this morning. Appreciate you all. And uh, make sure that uh, Matt Harvey, who I guess moonlights as a bouncer at Stubblefield events, uh, is at uh, the next couple ones. You Just in case. Just in case. Because yeah. you never know. Right? Absolutely. You just never know.